Hey everyone, Bernard here with the latest Citizen Vlog. It's a City presence, isn't it? And we're looking back at the game Southampton versus City on Sunday, the 5th of July, 7 pm kickoff at St Mary's. Of course, not the greatest result for, for us, was it? Um, a 1 0 defeat for City. Um, pretty much against the run of play, but don't take anything away from Southampton. I'm not a happy clappy chap who says, you know, oh, you know, I remember being at York away because it wasn't at York away. I was at Mansfield at home when there's about three thousand for that stupid auto windscreen Johnston paints as the as the cup price buy one get one free trophy thing. But uh, no, I'm not. I'm not on that level. But also, I'm not, I'm not averse. I'm not averse to criticising City. But obviously, I am grateful for what they've done for us. But I mean, you know. We've got to take the rough of this. We've got to be critical. Of these these guys have paid a lot of money, a hell of a lot of money. They earn more in a week than you know what they earn in a week. It takes me a couple of years to earn. So, yeah, I think we've got a right to criticise them because uh, you know I think that that's only fair if they're if they're not if they're not uh, pulling up trees for us and making putting the effort in. Mainly last night, I think they most of them put the effort in. Is there a couple that certainly put the effort in, but just weren't good enough? I mean, there's a difference, isn't it, between putting the effort in and just not being, just not being up to the task, really. So anyway, let's have a look. You've still, obviously the line up there. I was, I was on, I was seven with my line. I predicted line up. I was seven months or so. Please, I got seven right of out of eleven. That's not bad at the starting line up. So uh, please, if you're new to this Citizen Channel, please push the notification. And make sure you push the subscribe button first as well. Otherwise, you won't you won't be able to push the notifications, will you? Because you're not subscribed, so that'd be fantastic. Tell your friends, please. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna have a, a brief look at the game, as brief as it can be. Obviously, I've got almost two pages of notes. Usually, I only have about just over a page, but there's a lot going on, so I'll, I'll rush through it. I don't want to waste your time and my time being de too depressed. But we'll we'll sort of pick on the on the main points. Um, yeah, the team. Yeah, it was quite a strong team. Um, obviously, with, when you've got KDB and Foden on the bench, you've got options, haven't you? But it should have been good enough to do, jo do the job anyway. Um, just before the match, it was interesting they did a close up on Bernardo clapping the NHS thing. I think they were trying to see if he was clapping. I don't, I don't know the reason for that particularly. Uh, good to see Mr. Gunn on the bench for for Southampton. I believe he's he's going out on loan, is he as well? So he's not doing so well there, is he? He's uh, not doing so very well for Southampton, which is a, which is a great shame. Yeah, so from kickoff, Saints looks a bit nervy. Southampton a bit nervy, giving the ball away. But it was five minutes of real first real chance of Laporte error, and uh, I suppose it was an almighty scramble, and we got away with it again. Uh, but then it sort of followed the set. You give give Southampton a little bit of heart. So for the next five minutes or so, they sort of tails were up, and they sort of had us on the back foot a little bit. So you know, between five and ten minutes, uh, Southampton were in the ascendancy. Um, and then we had a little bit of a gap. We got back into it, and then. 16 minutes wasn't long, was it? We got a great, fantastic Southampton goal, superbly taken by Shea Adams, was it? From 35, 40 yards after a Zinchenko error, but um, had no fault of uh, Edison. I mean, Edison was where he would normally be, and that's fair enough. Uh, I think the Southampton manager, Ralph, is it Ralph? Something? I don't say his surname, Ralph said... Um, they knew they knew that was the thing with Edison. They took advantage, but I mean, at the end of the day, it shouldn't have happened because it was it was a mistake by Zinchenko who got caught napping on with the ball, didn't he? So, you know, but all credit to Southampton took the ball, took the goal really well, and I'm not going to blame Edison in any way. The only person perhaps slightly at fault was Mr. Zinchenko. So yeah, that was on 16 minutes. Um, we had to regroup a little bit. Cancelo on 22 minutes did well, but shot wide. Uh, Jesus had a shot over the bar. 26 minutes, a great, a great City chance. Cancelo, a great cross ball to Sterling, and Sterling put it across. But again, there's no one in that six yard box. You don't have a poach, do we? But more on that in a little bit. 29 minutes, a great, a great pass by an outside of his right foot by Jesus uh, and Sterling. Well saved by McCarthy. He had a good game, McCarthy, last night. Uh, so a lot of stuff was at him, but uh, he still had a good save. And then 29 minutes, literally of moments later, Fernandino hits the post. And then obviously another great save very soon after from McCarthy, from a, from a silver head. I mean, I think David Silva got up for a couple of headers last night. And that's another problem we might touch upon in a little while. 32 minutes, a Cancelo error. Um, but Redmond shot well over. Uh, Zinchenko gave the ball away again and uh, for a good break for the Saints, but nothing came of it. Uh, we had a Redmond at Edison on 34 minutes, a shot at Edison. 36 minutes, Mares, another good save after uh, good Cancelo work again. He's played quite well last night, Cancelo. We'll see in the player ratings in a bit. And we've not, not got Mr. Uh, Brennan today, it's Mr. Pukowski again, which is 
not very good, but there you go. Uh, 43 minutes, uh, Ings stretching for one, came over the top, just stretched and hit it over the bar. It was just too, too far for him. So, at half time, it was fairly, fairly even on chances. I think um, it was 30%, 70% possession, uh, chances wise, by half time. City had six, uh, Southampton had six shots, two on target. City had just eight shots, three on target. So, it was very, very close. It was the second half where the, uh, obviously, it was going to, be more, if you like, City all the time. So into the second half, 47 minutes, a good City chance from a corner, a glancing header by Jesus, but no one was there. We've got no poachers again. That's that's the same theme I'm coming to today to meet it. So good header by Jesus, just wasn't met by anybody. Uh, 49 minutes, uh, McCarthy, there was a block from McCarthy, uh, from a Laporte effort, and then a, a Jesus went up for a header and didn't get any power on it for about eight yards. I mean, obviously the ball wasn't coming to him. He had to go up and try and get it power on it but he couldn't do it we had seemed to have corner after corner in that period on there uh, 49 minutes silver 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 had a great chance at mccarthy on 53 minutes from a good ball from zinchenko this time he had a better second half than he did first half 54 minutes he had this that sort of side sort of volley wasn't it flying volley by jesus but there's no real power on it it looked good and it looked good in the air probably if you took an image of it it looked great but there's no real power constant city pressure i made a note here shot after shot blocks i mean southampton were getting bodies continually back in the box uh yellow card for fernandino with a late tackle on about 55 minutes 57 minutes we had we had a good flow, didn't we? But obviously Pep decided to sort of stop the flow and put their subs on. So we took Mares and Sterling off and put Foden and KDB on. And within two or three minutes, Foden had misplaced a pass to KDB and KDB had misplaced, misplaced a pass to Foden when both were sort of in the clear. So that just showed obviously they'd just come on. So there you go. And perhaps on another day they would have found each other, but they both both uh, both in error there, if you like. But you've got to, you know, having just come on. But having said that, you know, KDB certainly should, should you know, he's a professional, isn't he? So perhaps he should have done better. 64 minutes, a Bernardo shot was deflected wide from a, a great KDB ball this time. Uh, 65 minutes, of Jesus was and Jesus, another weak header at the keeper from a Zinchenko cross again. Again, he did have a better second half. Uh, 66 minutes, a cock up by Garcia, but fortunately, Edison was quickly off his line to, uh, to sort of save the day. I thought he was going to get beat to it, but uh, I think the Southampton players were getting a bit tired by them. Um, KDB, I made a little note here. Sometimes he always tries to play the killer ball. You know, sometimes KDB just just play a ten or fifteen yard pass. He don't don't always look for the thirty forty yard pass, and that's what he tries to attempt all the time. And he did that again yesterday when he first came on. Um, and I did make a note that we seemed to lose a little bit of momentum with the with the subs, and because it was quickly followed by a drinks break as well. So all momentum we had for the start of the second half was totally lost. Uh, a good save from Edison after a Saints break, uh, not a bad save from Edison. Well, I think he saved it with his feet, didn't he? Uh, Jesus got a yellow card for frustration for throwing the ball and a tantrum down on the floor. And we got to the 87th minute, and then obviously the the Southampton players were going down as though they were shot, and obviously. I thought the you know we we thought the game was up early, didn't we? But what once you get to the 85th minute and the the opposition's wasting time at places like South, we'd do the same. We can't uh, we can't quibble. That's professional football for you. But uh, five minutes of injury time probably could have should have been more. I mean, they must have had a couple of minutes for a drinks break. We had substitutions and a lot of bit of time wasting, but only five minutes injury time. And even in that five minutes. Uh, a great chip over by KDB again. So it wasn't such a disaster, was he? Even though I thought he, he was looking back. But looking at my little notes, uh, chip over to Bernardo, who's sort of feebly wide from the edge of the six-yard box. I think Jesus was behind him as well, but there's no guarantee he, he would have done any better. Uh, 94 minutes. McCarthy comes for a cross, totally misses it. But again, no one in the box, no one in the box to take advantage for City. He sort of faffs at it and misses it. Doesn't it? Doesn't get the ball. Great chance, just goes to waste. Ninety-five minutes, of course, we got the free kick on the edge of the box, and he just knew it wasn't going to win, go in from KDB, and he he just hit the wall with it. And that was it, a one-nil defeat. Very, very, very depressing. Just the two substitutes by Pep. So. Wouldn't it have been nice to have a, a young striker to come off the bench? Wouldn't, it been, wouldn't that have been lovely, just to, have, just, just, just to mix it up a little bit, you know? But there you go. Uh, so that's three away defeats that Pep on the trot. That's the first time it's happened to him, three away treat. I mean, obviously it's not the first time it's happened to the City, but it's the first time it's ever happened to Pep as a manager, three away treat. It's nine, nine games lost in total, more than United, more than Wolves. Absolutely dreadful. I mean, yet yeah, we're still eight, ten points ahead. Uh, the stats of the game, 
Um, Southampton's again second half they didn't do that much to the first half seven shots four on site since he's 25 shots six on site how many were blocked I have no idea at least I must have been at least 14 15 blocked as well uh, possession 26 percent Southampton 74 percent City big chances missed one by Southampton five by City and we're still with five games left eight points clear of Leicester City so we have a quick look at the player ratings so that's that's by the by, isn't it? Eight points clear of Leicester City. Player ratings, let's have a look. Right, this is uh, Simon Bukowski. Uh, Edison pinged the ball across the floor into Southampton half early on to signal his, 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 his use of building moves. Caught out for the goal, but Sinchenko gave him little chance to get back. Had very little to do otherwise, but came out well to stop a counter. He's give Edison seven. Yeah, I mean, my basic is six. I'm going to give Edison an extra half a point. I think seven's a bit... Uh, you know, if we'd won the game, I think seven's fair enough, but uh, we did lose the game, so I'm going to give him 6.5. Cancelo, good touch and intelligent runs down the right, made him a useful option on the flank, able to overlap. Uh, occasionally less than committed with his defensive duties and faded after the break, but one of City's best players. And he's give uh, Cancelo a seven. I would disagree with that. If you looked at my little review of the game there, he did, was involved in a, in a striking function, in, a, in an attacking function. He, he did okay at the back, I think, but that wasn't what he was after doing, was it? Uh, Garcia calm and composed, barking out instructions. Southampton tried to play play on him as the last man, but never gave them an he never gave them an opportunity to pound. So if you give Garcia a seven, yeah, there's that's just one error. I mean, I'm going to give a six point five, which is better than average. But I think I think Mr. Barkovsky has been a bit a bit uh, happy with his scores here. I think obviously the, these these are scores that would would won the game for me. Uh, for the players, because as a team we didn't we didn't do it no matter what, did we? Laporte they kicked the air to uh, to allow an early chance that Redmond could have buried, but settled after that to be the anchor that City needed at the back. Some encouraging forays into the opposition box. So he's given Laporte a uh, seven. Again, I'll give him six point five. I'm not going to go as bad as seven. Zinchenko gave the ball away cheaply, and it cost City the opening goal. Didn't really improve after that in the half, losing the ball on a number of occasions. Improved after the break, he did, and more comfortable in the Southampton half. But won't have ousted Mendy on this performance. So he's given Zinchenko a five. I can't disagree with that. Zinchenko was our worst player yesterday. Today. You can never never doubt his efforts in Chenko, but his becoming just doesn't look good enough this season. After you know, it'll be be one of these dependable guys that you think you know you sort of have in your squad. He's he's becoming a bit a bit. Unfortunately, he's becoming a little bit suspect this season. It's um, he's not alone in that, is he? Let's be honest about it. Fernandinho, part midfielder, part defender, and gave the impression that he was a bit rusty. I agree, with us to play further forward. Southampton finding more joy beyond him than opposition sides usually do. Could have seen a second yellow for a wild charge, yeah. Uh, Zinchenko, uh, Fernandinho was giving him a five. I give a six. I thought he played okay. It's a bit, say, it was a bit silly. Could have got a second yellow card, but considering you know, he was playing a bit of a different role last night, I, th I thought he played okay. You know, so I'm going to give him the basic. Uh, Silver, City's metronome with the team looking at their most poised when he was on the ball. Still better at finding space in the box and punishing goalkeepers with it. And was denied twice from good positions. Yeah, he's give David Silver an eight. I absolutely echo that. He was my City man of the match last night. I thought he was everywhere and was superb. It's a shame if some of the other players weren't feeding off his wavelength, unfortunately. Bernardo, there are glimpses of the player that was the best in the league last season, but too often the final touch or ball was off to leave another frustrating afternoon. A level below the other players. Players. I'd have to agree. I thought Bernardo wasn't wasn't great. Uh, he's given him a six. I mean, I'm still going to give him a six because he didn't do anything particularly wrong. But uh, he's not he's not as incisive and cut himself, was he? But uh, he put hundred percent in. That's all you that's that's all you can say really. Mares, a few nice runs in behind the South and defend. Southampton's defence and his direct approach is welcome but was kept out of the game for large periods and substitutes before the hour mark. So let's give Mares a six. Yeah, I'll echo that with a six. Um, better the first half he saw before he got subbed I don't think he, he touched the ball did he Sterling came into the game after a quiet start and worked well with Zinchenko on the left side in the second half worked some promising opportunities but nothing came off he's given Sterling a 7 I'm only giving Sterling a 6 I, I thought he was he, he started ok but I just still again in the second half like Mares, I, I didn't really see him involved in anything in the second half before he came off Jesus another game without a goal not for want of trying and there weren't any glaring misses well was he could have done better, but there were a few half chances, yeah, that's quite right. That didn't find the net, that won't do anything for the confidence of the player. 
needs building up well. I mean, how, how long do we have to build his confidence up for? He gives Jesus a six. I'm only going to give Jesus a five, to be honest with you. I thought, again, he was one of our, was Zinchenko, one of our weaker links last night. And again, effort was there, 100%. But at the end of the day, he did have some half chances and he should be, should be perhaps, you know, sometimes you see him put those away, don't you? And obviously, he's some, he, has, he has the odd great game, but unfortunately... I can't remember the, the last great game he had. Um, and going on to the substitutes, Foden wasn't able to influence the game. Uh, so he's just given him a six. Yeah, I mean, I'm just giving him a six for turning out. Uh, De Bruyne, when he's, even his passing range is off, which isn't going to be City's day. I nearly give De Bruyne a 5.5, .5, but having read back my little notes there, he did two or three good things. But as I say, he just wants to stop trying to do everything fantastic and just just do a normal thing just just do a simple pass sometimes don't try and do these killer passes i mean they do work obviously that's what we we have him for but uh sometimes you think he should look a little bit near and not not sort of try and do a 30 40 yard killer pass all the time but you know he he's the boss so we, we do whatever he says yeah just southampton yeah southampton play well um and they were lucky. They rolled the luck. I mean, that's as simple as that. You've got to ride your luck. But they put bodies bodies in the uh, in the box. I was listening to Cheesy's blog last night, and he had the the American guy. I don't I don't know his name. My apologies to him. And he's on about the inverted wingers, and I I think he's quite right because if you think about last night, there was a couple of occasions. There's one clear one where Sterling was through in the second half. And rather than shooting, because it's because it's on his left, he, he he tends to bring it back all the time. And obviously Southampton played that well defensively. You know they were getting men back in the box. By the time he brought it chinked inside, there were six, eight Southampton players in the box, and this is why we couldn't get back. So I mean, and the same with Mares on the other side, because Mares obviously does the same thing. He chinks inside. You know he goes left and then chinks back onto his left foot. But that coming backwards and forwards gives the defence that extra split seconds you know, seconds to actually get back into position and, and sort of block the thing and that's where we suffered last night and what, what's wrong with swapping him around occasionally what's wrong with you know right? I think I saw him come on the right very briefly I thought oh he's changing over and then he went back on the left again I mean what's wrong with just swapping him over for 10 or 15 minutes just to, just to mix it up a little bit especially games last, last night where you, you're playing a, a determined Southampton who not only defended well but you know like you know anyone can put 10 men behind the ball but they were actually quite clever they got some good players Southampton you know they, they were in a, probably a false position at the start of the season because they were playing some good football and uh, you know we, we they do have potential but they were getting men back and they were getting men up I mean that's something perhaps City could help to do with a little bit we do get men back and up but we don't get enough men in the box do we that's the problem so yeah I'm quite quite impressed with Southampton but as I said they'd, any, another day they would probably would have lost that game by a couple of clear goals but they rolled the luck and they got away with it and special mention to McCarthy and special mention to the guy who scored the goal um, yeah I was on I guess he's on a blog last night and I said we need a striker we've needed a strike for two seasons now uh, we can't rely on Aguero even even when he's playing I mean he's lost half a yard this season anyway um, and he, he's obviously always going to have time off for injuries he does every season he always has done from, from since joining us so you know why we've not sort of invested or brought one of the young players through I don't know I mean we had nobody on the bench to influence that strike last night we were putting crosses into the box that no one was getting I mean David, if David Silva's your guy getting getting his headers on you know what chance have you got I mean it wouldn't be nice to just bring a, a big young lad on or something you know a, a 19 year old or someone just just for that last 20 minutes to, to cause trouble and you know worry that Southampton defence who coped quite admirably with all the high balls that came into the box I mean because they're, they're quite they're quite good at the back Southampton when they can do that so and we've been crying out for a strike and last night again it came home to roost most of the time we get away with it don't we but, you know but nine times this season we haven't and how many of those games were we not have more shots in the opposition, probably Liverpool away. I can't think of any others where we didn't actually actually not batter the opponents, but we certainly had more chances than the opponents. So we've so many times that ball goes into that box, and we just so there's there's always just someone missing. A midfielder hasn't got natural striking instincts. A midfielder who scores goals is great, but it should be a bonus. It should be a bonus on top of having decent strikers who score goals. And you know, I, I, you've got to blame. Pep and the, and the system because we, you know at the end of the day if you, you have two players for every position we've been surviving on one and a half for the next, last year and a half two years it's uh, I can't remember when, when we had three strikers never mind never mind two strikers it's uh, it's wrong and we've got to sort that out and we're not 
going in and pep so i've I read pep today with throwing money at it won't solve the problem is quite right but uh it's putting putting people in positions where they can do some damage would help you know and uh, last night he cried out for it and say we had, we didn't have the luck which we did against liverpool every sort of thing sort of went in for us against liverpool last night it didn't uh looking at twitter obviously on zinchenko's getting a lot of stick um but I think Zinchenko, like a couple of the other guys, had great seasons like last season, the season before, and Mr. Versatile, but he's, he's showing his weaknesses this season. Um, he's not playing enough, and when he does come in, he is prone to make little mistakes. And looking at even the defence, Laporte is making mistakes. He doesn't get picked up on, upon, you know. I mean, obviously, no one's going to pick on Garcia for making a mistake, but Laporte, is, he made at least a couple of mistakes last night. Cancelo was probably the best best defender last night of our defenders. Um, Fernandino, because he was not used to playing in midfield, he was it was a bit odd, wasn't he? David Silva, an absolute genius. He was our man of the match last night. He's, how old is he? I mean, you know, he shouldn't be. I mean, we've got younger players. We've got guys who should be stepping up and not not relying on David Silva, who won't be with us in a few games time. And he was our man of the match, or my man of the match, and I think most people's last night. Bernardo isn't doing it, is he? Mares. Yeah, did it okay? Did okay? Does okay, but you know he he didn't get much room again to manoeuvre last night, so he's pretty ineffective. Jesus again worked hard, not clinical enough. Sterling again against bulk, against a lot of defenses like that. He's he's a bit stymied. He's a bit stuck in his Sterling for what he can do. So overall, yeah, I mean if you think about. Um, uh, it was quite funny because the last time ref referee Andrew Mariner uh, was at St Mary's was the nine nil Leicester win, wasn't it? And that was that was mentioned before the game. I thought, oh, let's let's have another one. But uh, no, all credits to Southampton; they deserved it. We weren't good enough on the day. Nine defeats in the season isn't good enough. I'm sure we'll sort something out. Um, but there are, lot, there are obvious things. It's not rocket science, is it? That uh, that are wrong with the, with the team. Um, and I say I'm not gonna. I didn't mark anyone less than six apart from um, Jesus and Zinchenko because they uh, obviously weren't just up to it last night, even though I'm not going to doubt their effort. Anyway, please let me know in the comments what you think. And if they, I mean, if we've got to sort, I mean, we're on about getting defenders and etc. but we've got to sort of striker out, please, because uh, Jesus uh, Aguero's with us one more year, isn't he? How many games is he going to, you know, he's going to miss at least 20 games next season, probably more. Uh, Jesus isn't a striker as such, he isn't a number nine, not for us anyway, he might be for Brazil, but even though Brazil he doesn't play number nine, even though he wears number nine, does he? So uh, anyway, let me know what you think in the, in the comments, please uh, check all my links and uh, give us a follow. If, if you're more into Facebook than Twitter, you can follow me, find me on Facebook, at, um, just look for Bernard Deneen on Facebook, I'll, I'm on there and obviously my Twitter accounts. And if you can get onto moviegamenostage.com, my little site, little business for old and rare DVDs, movie posters and board games, that'll be absolutely fantastic, thumbs up to you. Anyway, hopefully, I'll obviously I'll be back, uh, please uh, just at the end of this uh, vlog there's a little thing of what's coming soon on City Past and City Present but obviously I'll be back for a little look at the uh, preview of the Newcastle game which is in a couple of days so I'll be back very soon with that anyway so anyway a bit depressing it was my birthday today uh, I had to get up at three o'clock to work and after watching that last night I wasn't in the greatest mood but hey life's, life's short isn't it you just got to get over it and you know, disappointments, we're used to it, aren't we? People are saying typical city, but uh, I got used to the typical city being a bit better than this, unfortunately, just recently. So, hey, there you go. Anyway, I was Pep last night. Pep, Pep Watch. Yeah, he was fairly animated. Um, I'm a bit worried, still a bit worried about what he's going to do, whether he's going to stay or whether he's going to... I certainly don't think he... I don't think he'll extend his contract. Uh, I don't get any, any idea that he's going to do that. And obviously, we've got to rebuild in the... A rebuild in the process, haven't we? So uh, if we can win one or two cups every season, next two or three seasons while we're rebuilding, that'll be fine, won't it? I'm not greedy. Anyway, thanks for watching. What are we going to do with the rest of the day? Have a great one. Look after yourselves, look after your friends, look after your family. Let's all look after each other. And until we meet again, up the blues, and I'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.